मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट वेलकम इन द टीचिंग लर्निंग लाइव सेशन फॉर द स्टूडेंट ऑफ बी ए पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन बेसिक कोर्स इज परस्पेक्टिव ऑन पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर संजय कुमार अग्रवाल असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पोलिटिकल साइंस महाराजा जसिन कॉलेज यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली आई एम गोइंग टू टेक गिव ए लेक्चर वीडियो लेक्चर ऑन द कंसेप्चुअल अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन बेसिकली I will cover it in basically eight to nine uh, live lectures, and so this perspective of public administration under this, I am going to cover first lesson today, that is conceptual understanding of public administration, where I am going to take you a journey of the basic concepts of evolution of public administrations, what kind of differences it has with the private administrations, with a bit. their changing role in the present contemporary perspective and their role and their implication and significance in the present context for that it is better to understand what is public administration if you know public administration today performing a very important role in the transformation of society at large it is a vital organ of the government which performs various important role whether it is regulatory whether it is kind of kind of public welfare so it is a kind of instrument through which socio economic transformation uh, through this they 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 with the purpose goal and objective of the government is the life so it's a basic organ of the government basically everything is rooted through him and according to that it we call that that the this is the action part of the government which works with the proper system of the organization under the provisions of rule of law they performs various kinds of compulsory functions like maintenance of law and order collections of revenue and apart from that they also performs a certain welfare and public utility services like post and telegraphs and transport facilities which is the utmost required responsibility in the present contemporary perspectives but what is more important to understand that public administration as an academic discipline is just 135 around 135 year old when we see the woodrow wilson's monograph on politics administration dichotomy which he has written in 1887 from that time onwards we can understand the concept of public administration as a discipline or subject matter but before that public administration also existed with kind of activity of the any kind of governmental affairs whether it is monarch or dictatorship or or aristocracy kind of things but it existed even the origin of human civilizations when we started living in organized setup public administration's roles and responsibility in the forms of basic activities was very much there but however what is more important to understand that earlier time during the medieval and ancient period it is at the mercy of the monarch or the king and that is the today it is differs considerably in the structures and goals in the present context what is more important that at that time these officials are at the mercy of the king they are recruited on the mercy of the king so they are they act as a mere servant of the king and earlier it was very much authoritarian patriarchal and elitist in characters and where welfare activities are purely incidental and optionally undertaken what is more important today to understand it is being replaced by the public bureaucracy under the provisions of rule of law and they have to work under that provisions what is more important today is that uh, welfare the origin of welfare modern state the multiplication of state functions uh, on 19th century onwards we can see that old model of state administration which was patriarchal hereditary and uh, and officials dumb recruitment process are being replaced by the rule of law provisions they are recruited by the uh, we call them as a concepts of public bureaucracy it is recruited on the basis of public law they perform such duty task within the legal framework and becoming more and more public oriented their main motive is to serve the public at any cost even though they are the uh, implementing organ 
group x as ex, uh, expressions of the will of state they perform their duties as well but the scope and importance of public administration today increasing with the societal complexity and the specialization and differentiation so in this context it is important to understand what kind of role public administration is performing today it covers every every aspects of the citizens life it does not involve only one aspect which is compulsory in nature i told you that it it covers also a kind of welfare and public utility services and their roles and responsibilities increase beyond that level today so facing with rise of the people's expectations there is a movements also revolution rising expectations of people we can see that public administration is being increasingly loaded with additional kind of work and responsibility in the name of efficiency and socio economic transformation whether to establish a kind of egalitarian society it is more important to understand why this important aspect today our presence level is very minimal so it is utmost duty of the government as such in that matter public administrator is to provide a kind of efficient administration and today we can see that due to e governance and developmental administration which is goal oriented action oriented provisions so we can understand that concepts of welfare state is kind of thing today in reality today and it works for the economic development socio economic transformation of the society at large so what i am going to tell, tell you that it is important to understand the modern concepts of public bureaucracy which is which we call uh, under the provisions of the this wilsonian concept woodrow wilson's concept he categorically said that politics and administration differ categorically and traditionally public administration is related with the implementing organ of the government as such but today public administration is no more only limited to that extent it has important role and responsibility even in the formulating of public policy at large through uh, uh, through various kind of uh, things and then they have utmost responsibility in implementing those things at the same time they have to work for the citizen at large so they have to make a kind of public opinion and they have to work with that Uh, build up that kind of thing so ultimately what i am going to tell you that it is law it is the policy dynamics is being done by the legislature at obviously but it is being implemented by the public administrator public bureaucracy and for that matter i recall the gerald kaiden highlighted number of important implications and role of responsibility of public administration in the present context we say that it is utmost responsibility very important role is the preservation of polity the expression of will of state which is being done in, at the legislature level it is their duty to preserve those kind of things they are they are the permanent executive and for that matter it is their responsibility uh, in this in that context they are also they are also responsible for creation of egalitarian society as i told you that they have to maintain a kind of stability and order in society and since they deal with the public matters administration society and state roles they synchronize public administration synchronize that kind of role in a such a manner to bring a kind of stability and order in society but what is more important to understand is that they work in the formal provision under rule of law provisions and so they perform such task which comes under the legal paradigm but apart from that that important to understand they work in a institutional framework through institutional provisions they bring try to bring a socio economic changes in the society no there is no ad hoc mechanism they have to work in a formal provisions under the provisions of rule of law through institutional framework under the parliamentary democracy and in this context to to bring a, that kind of order moving order in the society they have also an important responsibility to management of large scale commercial services because on that thing livelihood of citizens is dependent and that context we have to understand their responsibility to large scale commercial services maintenance is also their responsibility and in this context also they are important to to 
to highlight or to work on those challenges which existed in the society uh, uh, even if we call say during the days of independence after the independence we can say that they have important role in ensuring economic growth and development what is more important but i'm telling you that at the time of independence during three five year plans government governmental administration basically focuses on the economic growth model under the provision of nehruvian law nehruvian model of the mixed economy but that kind of economic growth model which we focuses primarily on the three five year plan is basically is quantitative in nature we have to we have to work for the masses we have to save them we have to provide uh, livelihood provisions at their doorstep that is more important responsibility but that onwards fourth five year plan onwards we move forward to the provisions of development and that development is a apart from this quantitative it is qualitative in nature for that matter you have to understand we started working on the public administration we started working on the rule of law provision policy dynamics they started working on the provisions of the empowerment capacity building health issues education because that is certainly going to benefit them in real terms so for that matter through this personal growth apart from this personal growth national income also increases so they have to ensure growth and economic development for that matter and next gerald tyden also highlighted that it is utmost responsibility of the public administration to protect the weaker section of society every component of the society though we list with a mixed framework cosmopolitanism is a important provisions so despite this unity in diversity context national integration is important responsibility of public administration in that context so protection of minorities and weaker section is also constitutional responsibility for that matter they have to work through the policy dynamics various programs runs for them and for that matter it is important to understand their role in responsibility and as i told you that they work with the masses at grassroots level basically at block level district level or even in the panchayat level through this public bureaucracy concepts so they actually build the public opinion why i am telling this this public opinion is very important and it works through the participatory manners because participation is very important in this context and for that matter we have to understand uh, that why it is necessary to build a public opinion but it matters for governmental administrations and they also influence the public policy and political trends so so importantly their work dynamics and their performance to bring efficiency in economy and society is very important for that matter we have to understand that their role are very crucial for utmost development and upbringing of the society at large socio economic transformation national integration and kind of economic development things all these things are related to uh, to to public administration this is very crucial and important context so in that context we have to understand the basic definitions of public administration as such and for that matter we have to understand uh, the linkages or what kind of differences it has with administration what is public administration public administration if you see it is management of affairs of the government at all level whether it is national level state level or at a local level and as i told you have they synchronize the kind of they have to make a kind of interrelationship with the society administrator and state so it covers all three branches in and their interrelationship executive legislature judiciary they they they, uh, they deal with it covers all kind of thing complete governance paradigm and their interrelationship so it is in that sense it is wider concept rather than administration administration is the limited aspects which you have to understand because it is the only work administrator only work in a legal framework for determined action and goal that has to achieve with a conscious purpose that is their motive in literal terms 
it is the management of affairs of the people. It, administration is to serve the masses, serve the people. The basic literal meaning is that of administration is to serve the masses, serve the people, and manage the state of affairs. And for that matters, very various thinkers. If you if you try to understand it, various thinkers basically. Uh, for instance, F. M. Marx and Fichner have identified in a certain basic connotations, which they highlight that Marx highlighted it is administration is nothing but a kind of determined action taken in pursuit of conscious purpose, and so determined action is important provisions of the administration, and by systematic ordering of affairs and calculated use of resources. Aimed at making those things happen which one wants to happen. That I told you that, that it is the expression of will of state. Government, whatever government wanted to do, it is rooted through them, and then uh, it is determined action with the conscious purpose. No ad hoc mechanism that you have to understand. Efficiency in economic model is the catchword of the administration as well. So you have to understand that calculated use of resources. You have to optimally utilize in in a such a manner that. The purpose and goal and objective of the organization is to achieve at minimal cost and minimal time. That is important. And for that matter, you have to understand that J.M. Fifner also identify the administration in that context, that organization and direction of human and material resources to achieve desired end. So I partly correlate it with the human resource development. What is human resource development? You manage the state of affairs in such a manner that that persons who only not only material resources is important. Human resources is very much important, and for that matter, you have to understand that you have to manage the state of affairs in such a manner that they put everything to the to achieve that goal. They should not only put their hand; they should put their brain also. They have to work with the provision of heart also. So complete mixing of heart, brain, and hand. This putting all these three together is real crux of the and will enthusiasm and sense of duty responsibility is also important. And that is why I told you that trajectory, which is evolutionary in perspective of public administration, which started with politics administration dichotomy in the evolutionary provision of first phase of evolution of public administration, which is being certified later in 1900 by Goodnow, that politics administration dichotomy, they separate these provisions. From that angle, you have to understand the distinct essential components of the administration, which are, which is nothing but a following. Which is, I told you that administration is a kind of things which we take determined actions in the pursuit of common goal to achieve that goal. So it is goal-oriented activity. It is action-oriented, and so for that matter, it is how these things can be achieved. Nothing can be achieved in vacuum. Each and everything is a coordinated, participative nature. We have to accomplish the goal at any cost. And with the provision of efficiency in economy, how this can be achieved? This can be achieved only with the provisions of corporations. So corporation is important provisions, and so they perform that kind of synchronizing with the society at large. And third important role of administration is pursuit mm -hmm. of conscious purpose. Properly work, thought, proven, and action-oriented provisions with the proper plan and. Implementation techniques, guidelines that have to follow, and determine the action. Whatever you want to take, that is the basic purpose. How and what needs to be done, that you have to plan earlier, and accordingly you have to execute the plan within the framework of legal dynamics, and so that is determined actions. Systematic ordering of affairs, because systematic, if you not do the things in a proper manner. Then you are going to lose, or somewhere you will not complete the work in on time. So for that matter, if you see the budgetary provisions, budget what does budget means? Budget has not only the financial statement of that uh, that particular financial year. It includes the revised estimates of the preceding year and actual expenditure of the last to last year. So why why these kind of things uh, is these three provisions are in budgets? 
so that is why i'm telling you systematic ordering of affairs is important and it gives a chance to understand and accordingly we change the plan framework and budget outlay and so that is the systematic ordering of affairs is important and you have to utilize human resources and material resources in a such a way directed way to achieve the goal at any cost that is the basic purpose getting things done at any cost any cost does not mean ad hoc mechanism you have to work with a proper guideline proper mechanism proper formal provisions under the provisions of institutional framework rule of law and so that is the things getting things done at any cost does not mean arbitrary provisions which were earlier so even earlier provisions were even very much visible in the in the spoils system of united states of america earlier and uh, in switzerland also at that time of the officials are at the mercy of the government legislature till that time that officials are continuing in office that time government or legislature are in power so that kind of spoils system is not good and that that why i told you that earlier system of of bureaucracy or officials uh, who are at the mercy of the uh, of the king under that provisions it it uh, not actually work in a right manner so for that it is being today it is being replaced or uh, what is more important uh, important characteristics of public bureaucracy it do not work in a partisan manner it is neutral it, it is politically neutral and for that matter it is permanent executive that you have to understand that's why i'm telling you it is the it is the custodian of files so it is a preservation of policy which i told you earlier from moving forward to that uh, further we have to understand the basic concepts of public administration as i told you that public administration is a larger field uh, components of the field of administration and it is a any kind of administration whether it is it, it in the public interest they work with the pu public interest public pursuit so it, it simply means the governmental state of affairs public administration is governmental state of affairs in a particular it they work in a particular political setting and all administration of private administration is known as a private administration which i will going to deal in a in a coming time uh, so broader view which i told you uh, uh, that it covers all kind of government activity for their purposes fulfillment of public policy public policy related component they have to devise the mechanism they have to follow the guideline but that has to achieve that has to be fulfilled so all kind of activities covers under all governmental activities comes under this provisions but in narrow sense which wilsonian concept woodrow wilson and good now highlighted and even existed in the second phase of evolution Uh, of post-cop mechanism of Luther Gulick and in the early or even during the scientific evolution of the public administration scientific management theory, we see that this categorization is basically they say narrow in narrow sense that it activities only concerns with the executive branch of government. So narrow and broader perspective uh, uh, is basic to understand, but we have to understand the broader concepts of public administration. What actually means so for that if you go through the various definitions given by the various thinkers you have to understand there are three basic aspects which is being highlighted in terms of definitions separately some line of thinkers equate it with the activities of public administration with implementation of law and public policy that's it and for that matter <coughs> sorry for that matter ld white and woodrow wilson's and demo highlighted certain important aspects and they correlate it with the only with the implementation of public law and public policy and for that they highlighted that ld white says that public administration consists of all those operations having for their purposes fulfillment of enforcement of public policy so enforcement implementation is key words for ld white and it it concerned is consist of all those operations related with that for that matter so you have to understand then woodrow wilson uh, who is the father of public administration is in, in the evolutionary stage i told you that 1887 he had given the concept of politics administration dichotomy so accordingly subject matter 
accordingly to subject matter it is as a discipline he is the father he is the originator of public administration so he says that public administration is a detailed and systematic application of law it is nothing but implementation of public policy dynamics under the provision of rule of law that should be systematic that is through the detail that is through the institutional framework that is more important so demo highlighted public administration is the fulfillment or enforcement of public policy as declared by the competent authority why this competent authority competent authority is a formal provisions so that you have to understand public administration is law in action they have to work at grassroots level under the provision of law so it is the executive branch of the government so this first line of thinkers whether it is ldy demo or or wood robinson they high, they uh, highlighted this components if you move forward the true line of uh, thinkers also once line of thinkers is simon and fifner they they highlighted some one little different though partly related but that you have to understand fifner highlighted the coordinating role of administration they have important role and implica implications in coordination particularly why this coordination for implementation of public policy at large so it at any cost getting the work done by coordinating efforts for the people so that work they can work together to accomplish set task that i told you that we plan policy dynamics and devise the objective and for that matter means so public administration is a means of coordination according to fifner and they have performed the coordinating role for that and according to simon herbert simon say that the scope of public administration is coincide with the activity of executive and administrative branch only so again simon limited in that context but moving forward apart from these two basic aspects if we move forward we we recall the definition basic and complete definition in the contemporary which is still relevant in the contemporary perspective is the f a negro he his definition is very comprehensive he says that besides ever components with has highlighted so far it also covers the political and system political and social system as well because we have to work because public administration work in a particular political setting and work for the they have to work for the societal needs and aspirations so they work also in the social system as well so it includes these two basic components of political and social system as well so according to negro f a negro if you see it is a cooperative group of force in a public setting the first thing he highlighted that we cannot achieve the goals and welfare of citizens can only be achieved through the cooperative group efforts so administration is also a group work in a group setting for the public welfare that is important aspect second aspect you have to understand which is being highlighted by negro i told you earlier also that it covers all three branches of the government even i i i visualize is the more important that it even today move forward this government paradigm to governance level government only work in a formal way but since people participation ngos participation involvement of so many citizens and pressure group trade union likewise so so we are involving this informal setup also so apart from that we which we which we deal in the next <coughs> day session but it covers this three branches of the government and their interrelationship why interrelationship for the betterment of society or to synchronize the society you have to work for the society at large so their interrelationship is important and i i told you that though wilson highlighted that their role is only in implementation but negro says that there is an important role also in public policy making why how, how it has important role in public policy making because you can see that they they work with the masses work for the welfare of people so they they know the actual things and they note down such kind of things and they they through secretary it goes to the minister and through minister it goes to the parliament or cabinet for the policy dynamic so they have important role in that matter so thus 
it is very much part of the political process which negros is apart from that it has also significant and important role other than private administration which i am going to deal with you today uh, in in the, the coming coming time and it also as a study and practice has it is been much influenced by in the same year by human relation approach as i told you post cor mechanism or scientific management theory they believe in efficiency in economy model but they at the same time they believe in a kind of uh, principle of administration which should be universally applicable they ignore the components of human relations because we have to work in a public setting so various role and responsibility you have to perform so various kinds of services for that matter delivery mechanism may differ so we cannot work in a watertight compartment of universalization of principle so what i'm going to tell you negro before evolution of this human relation approach which is being highlighted by the elton mayo dr christopher team in hawthorn experiment which we study later is negro highlighting that it is being influenced by the human relation approach and it is important implications in that matters and accordingly it is closely associated with as i told telling you it has goes beyond the governance para, government paradigm to governance level that is there in the negro definitions in a different way it it says that it is closely related with the numerous private groups and individuals in providing services to the community why this kind of involvement why government is working with the private enterprises private setup ngos citizens and pressure group and trade union because they have to implement the policy for the welfare at any cost they have to accomplish the goals as per the requirements of the rule of law provision so if you take the stoic of all these things we can understand that public administration is nothing but it is a non political bureaucratic machinery of the government why this is non political bureaucratic machinery as i told you they do not work in a they work in a particular political setting but it does not mean that they are uh, they are <coughs> they should be politically neutral they do not have to work in a partisan manner their basic role and responsibility is to implement the policy which is being framed by the legislature so their important role in implementing our laws and policies in actions so uh, collection of revenue maintenance of law and order railways and postal services and maintaining the army life by running school and hospitals all these things are the act of which comes under the non political bureaucratic machinery for the implementation of things which is not being done by the uh, private sector so all these acts of the private uh, of the public administration which i have to understand but what is more important also that public administration is a kind of policy decision which is made by the political decision makers which they have to carry it out how they carry out so therefore public administration is related with the decision making and what is decision making according to <coughs> harvard simon and it is it is intelligence activity it is choice activity a kind of thing so decision is not important decision differs from the planning and so particularly for decision you have to have a flavor of that particular problem and then you have to involved in such state of affairs and then accordingly you devise the major means so important role of that in that context is decision making and they have important role as i told you they lead with the masses they have the important uh, problems they can understand they note down it and so for that matter the planning the work to be done is important work under the provision of public administration they formulate actually the objectives and goals and they work with the work with the legislature and citizens organizations to gain a kind of public support and also it due to this kind of involvement fund generations of the government program also becomes easy because government is not in a position to establish or understand the mechanism with what kind of requirement it is rooted through the public bureaucracy as such <coughs> so in that context you have to understand it is related with the establishing and devising the organizations also it is related with the directing and supervising employee also providing leadership capacity also communicating the things and that matter work method and procedure appraisal performance and like by so many things 
So what? Why all these things is needed? Because I told you they have to work in a public setting. For that matter, not only coordination role is important. Decision making also expertise of them. They get informations from the citizens. They involve various um, various stakeholders in decision making to 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 arrive at the conclusion. And then all these things are works under the provision of proper procedure and methods. So it all these kind of functions of the governments comes under the provision of public administration. So it is related with the formulation and implementation of public policy. It is executive branch of the government. It works through the organizational machinery of the government at large, large formal provisions. Administrative processes are there. The coordination in group activity and social relationship is also important. Interaction with organization and their involvement. Because they live with the masses, I'm telling you again and again. So involvement is also how this thing is important. If you understand the <laughs> this system approach, input output model of David Easter. Input constitutes three components: requirements of the environment, political components, and the requirements of citizens. All these things, how did we infer this data through this public bureaucracy only? And accordingly, public policy is informed. So environment is also uh, important for that matter. So they have to interact between the organization and environment also for that matter. But if you go further, nature and scope of public administration is also, <coughs> is also a kind of thing which you have to understand. Nature and the scope both have two components. One say that it is, is nature is say that one is managerial aspects. Another view is integral view. Managerial aspects is concerned only with the technical and managerial activities, not with the technical and other activities. Managerial activity, how we have to manage the state of affairs, so that is limited connotations, which is given by Luther Bullock and Herbert Simon. So for that matter, they do not uh, work other non managerial activities, technical, which is technical, clerical, and manual activities. So, their more important role is, according to Herbert Simon and Luther Gulick, is that administration has to do with the getting things done with the accomplishment of defined objectives. And for that matter, they have to manage the state of affairs, they have to supervise them, they have to coordinate them but not technical services, no clerical services, no manual activities. But if you move forward, there are another line of thinkers highlighted by the L.D. White and Demo. It says that it deals with all kinds of activities, all kinds of activities, whether it is the, why all kinds of activities have to accomplish the, accomplish the objective at any cost. And for that matter, whether it is clerical, technical, manual activity or managerial activity all confuse the uh, whether it, from top to bottom everybody is involved every kind of activity is important that is the system approach under the provision of public administration that you have to, uh, that you have to understand so for that matter ld white and democ subscribes this view and <coughs> for the scope of public administration if you see there is a post call mechanism given by Luther Gulli and the scientific provision, which I, they told that there is a universal applicability of rule of law or principle of administration, which may not be suitable today in every context, which is being criticized by the human relations approach. And, but what is more important that post call activity neither can be neither whole of the public administration, it is not even significant part of the, in the present context. All these agencies, functions, and natures are differ, and they have to work under the different setting and different agencies face with different challenges and problems. So subject matters view is important also in today's view and it is the requirement of the day and for that matter that you have to understand that <coughs> post call view are only deals with the tools of administration where substance of administrations is something different. Real services which is performed by the various institutions for the people at large and these services differ considerably 
some kind of thing in the required specialized techniques and which may be covered under the post cure provision but mostly it is not being covered under the post cure me mechanism of planning organizing uh, supervising directing coordinating reporting and budgeting this is being given by the, by planning organizing staffing directing co stand for coordinating r stand for reporting b stand for budgeting all these things are important which is being given by the uh, by the luther bullock and uh, principle of administration uh, kind of uh, thinkers which is being highlighted by them but apart from that for that matter you know that we plan the thing and for that matter you organize and for that you supervise and give the directions and for that matter you have to coordinate also and after the coordination you have to re report the state of matter to the superiors through this hierarchy model and accordingly for that you have to budget the thing and why budgeting is important because everything in the formal setup is required to be formal provision of rule of law from the parliamentary democracy is being approved by the parliament every expenditure is being incurred which is going to be incurred is being approved by the parliamentary provisions so that is why important but today this framework of universal applicability is no more relevant which i told you that position of america may differ from the india and so is the case with under developed countries so services which required for the citizen at large and kind of activities for that matter to solve that problem and requirements of citizen differ considerably so no only post cloud techniques is required or that is not only functionally each and every affairs for that importantly you have to understand is this important concept but apart from that <coughs> which i told you that public administration and private administration that you have to understand also as i told you public administration is a kind of governmental administration private administration is a non governmental administration it is a, it is a business kind of administration which works for only profit whereas profit motive is not the subject matter of the private administration so but it does not mean they are not similar in various 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 components are similar to both of them and their differences also so for that matter there are similarities which is being highlighted by the certain thinkers like bullock arvi and refer mary forkett mary for parkett cole they distinguish uh, they made a kind of distinctions between public and private administration but they visualize that they both are the individual entity both work in a principles of equality of applications which is applicable whether it is public administration or whether it is private administration basic similarities are there what kind of basic similarities both works to achieve the goals and objective of the whatever goals which is being set up for particular organization whether it is public organization or private organization that you have to achieve so there is a similarity for that matter you may divide your ways and means but you have to achieve that goal the objective which is being set up by the them and what is, another similarity is both may work for the public welfare public utility services are there so the activities which is being performed by both of them of public oriented welfare oriented may be also partly but it is being also performed by public private administration so both of these things is important and methods and work procedure for that accomplishments of goals and objective may be common to both for that matter you have to understand uh, uh, dissimilarity also at later stage both are organized in a such a manner that they work on the principle of hierarchy superior subordinate relation is also important supervisory role is also important span of control and reporting component is also important so every work is important so <clears throat> under the provision of hierarchy both public and private administration works and what is more important another similarity is they both work on the context of utilization of resources both material and human resources in such a manner that whatever available resources are available at their disposal it should be used in a optimally in a such a manner with the coordinated force so bring desirable results that is important desirable result is important so it should be called well coordinated 
for that matter you have to use the resources in such a manner that you have to coordinate and apart from that this accounting statistics and administrative management and office management and procedures certain procedures and office management are same common to both both are being influenced by the knowledge and expertise of and practice and standard of each others so because i just told you that problem may be yours but solution rest with me then what will you do you obviously you will gain ideas from me my expert opinion is needed over there so for that matter knowledge expertise and practice and standards of each other is important and with that continues the expansion of public sector growth of public corporation government has joined heavily on the private sector business knowledge and for that matter you have to understand there is a one administrative staff college based in hyderabad in india which gives training to both private sector and public sector officials same kind of techniques to understand the components why this is important and today we can see that there is a lateral entry earlier also we we we, we take the expertise knowledge opinion and practice standard of other sector and ex this expansions and, uh, and the new liberal provisions of role of state certain dynamics of public administration also change so in this context we have to understand the implication of administrative staff college which is based in hyderabad they runs the common program for personnel of both public and private sectors in that context ever since private administration public and private administration has been developing into huge administrative giant with widening the network of offices all over the country and so also they are becoming impersonal in nature impersonal you have to you have to work in a such a manner that objective and of the organization has to full fulfill at any cost no partiality it has to be impartial in nature so that is more important and that also you have to understand and not only that today we are living in on the stage of democratic welfare state state concept of welfareism is there concept of democratic state is there so that concept of democratic state administrative state which work on the principle of democratic control and there is a public accountability so popular checks and balance of administrative behavior is also increasing in the private organization broadly why but they also have to work under the provision of rule of law so broader corporate social responsibility is coming there while they are taking technique they can take, take a separate stand but that that bad product for that product and bad result they have to responsible of society at large so that is important uh, that you have to understand here and in both places public and private administration many best recruitment process is there technical training methods of motivating the personnel and performance appraisal are maybe common to both why performance appraisal why reward and punishment why recruitment process in such a manner that human resource components human resource management is there we have to motivate we have to train them and accordingly we have to tag the utilize the expertise of the each and every components so this recruitment process which is being merit based ah uh, so it is it is motivation based and also usage of certain kind of techniques for performance appraisal and accordingly rewards and punishment was there so so this is the thing so there is a similarities in both public sector and private sector both in the contemporary perspective both needs to maintain proper public relations why public relations they have to work for the public so accordingly they have to do the research and if changes is required they have to change accordingly all these things to related with the public opinion public utility services you have to generate a kind of public opinion you have to work for the public welfare so no if and but you have you have to improve the improve the product for the bad result at any cost while advertising techniques i told you they they may give kind of thing in advertisement that this is the best product you use it and kind of things will happen but if it, if it brings a bad result i told you for improvement that 
they have to do the result. So in the case with the both public and private sectors is there. If you go, move forward, there are certain differences also. Despite this certain similarity, there are many differences between public and private administration. Popular idea of public administration is that it is bureaucratic, as I told you. It is characterized by detectivism. It is also characterized by inefficiency and inertia, which is, may not be the case with the uh, private administration. But they are business kind of thing. They are efficient in another sense. So Paul H. Appleby and Herbert Simon, Peter Drucker, F.A. Negro, these three, four thinkers highlighted the differences between public administration and private administration. And they have differentiated it on the following grounds. First ground is political direction and ministerial responsibility. Public administration has to subject to political direction in most of the policy decisions because public accountability through parliamentary democracy is there. So minister who lays down the broad policy outline under which bureaucracy has to implement the policy. Operational autonomy for operational autonomy bureaucracy may be granted certain kind of uh, certain kind of relaxation in doing the things, but ultimate responsibility rests with the legislature under the provision of parliamentary democracy, whether it is collective responsibility or individual responsibility. It is minister who is held responsible for all acts and omissions of the administrative juniors to the parliament. That is more important. So in most of the cases, there is a political directions and ministerial responsibility for that matter. Whereas in private administration, no such political direction, obviously it is seen. But also there in certain emergency situation, it may be visible there, that kind of political direction may be exercised in only in certain kind of exigency, emergency situation if required. Otherwise, uh, no direct political uh, directions is there. And then if you see, it is also a profit motive. Public administration is service oriented. Service is their basic motto. They work for the public welfare. Their work is public in nature. They have to promote community welfare. And so profit motive is not its goals. Maybe very marginal gain they can work or may work for work even for the loss. Many of the government of India public utility services uh, work on the marginal gains, or either they are they are at the loss. Even then they have to work. Even then they have to work at any cost that they are duty bound to do and spend on them. That is the public administration. Whereas private administration is characterized by the profit motive, not social service. All these efforts are directed to end to achieve this profit at any cost. And so what I'm telling you that what kind of implication are you going to see from here? Public administration is a service oriented, people oriented, goal oriented, maybe partly there in private administration also, but it is more service oriented for community at large. It, they have to promote community welfare at any cost. That is important that you have to understand. Profit motive is not their goal. So there is a profit motive difference is there. Then another important dissimilarity between public and private administration is conformity of laws and regulations. Public administration strictly has to work within the legal framework and operate strictly according to rule of law provisions and regulation which is being established by the democratic framework. But in private administration, I'm not saying that rule of law is not there. But general law which is regulates the business is applicable over there. Individual business firms have considerable flexibility in accomplishing that particular provisions. But basically it is general law which is applicable. In exigency, in emergency, you can see government intervention are there under the provision of rule of law, basic corporate social responsibility is there, but it does not mean that uh, it basically it operates strictly or according to that provisions. And the uniformity of treatment on that basis, there is a dissimilarity. In public administration, as I told you, they have to work in a non-partisan manner. They have to work in an impartial manner. They have to be politically neutral. And in that context, they have to work in form way for each and every procedure, each and every person. 
they have to treat each and every person in a consistent manner and in a proper framework with proper procedure in informed so public dealing matters should be informed under the provisions of public administration for that matter private administration on the other hand can practice differential treatment according to as i told you that they are profit motive so for that matter they can do various other components according to their preferences so preferential treatment private administration commonly discriminates with the regards to choice of products selling of products and fixing of product prices they are their specific domains and likely government do not intervene in in case of any mismanagement there is an intervention but there is an informality of treatment there is a difference with, with them another important uh, component is external financial control auditing system is very important to tab on the transparency and accountability of the any setup so public administration is subject to external financial control also legislature authorizes the income and expenditure to sgp branch only but the sgp cannot collect and spend money out of its own will so there is an internal audit system is there but external audit system is also there why to bring a transparency and accountability for that but that is may not be the case with the private administration the private administration finances are being controlled not controlled by the outside agency if they are free to manage its finances as it likes so accordingly all these things is important so nature of functions also differ in public administration caters the basically the social needs of people and provide the services of public utilities it carries the functions which are more urgent and vital for the existence of society at large like maintenance of law and order and defense activity whereas the private administration on the other hand carries out less less vital functions such as manufacturing of clothes and providing my marketable consumer goods to the public and catching the economic needs see the basic difference between the social needs and economic needs i'm not saying that directly direct implications of social needs is being performed by the public sector public sector whereas economic needs is being uh, also taken by public sector but basically it is responsibility uh, we see the specific domains of the private administration so public administration is open constant for public scrutiny and moral and public ethical parameters are there and so there is a significance of public administration so essential significance of modern society it works as, as a modern administrative state and delivery mechanism is serving rule of law and treating every citizen equally importantly so as uh, so what i see that despite this significance there is a socio economic it acts as a socio economic transformations it brings social integration and harmony in society at large so at the last in conclusion i am going to say that despite that again the background of ascendancy of new liberal ideology advocating the downsizing of the government and opening more space for market and non governmental agencies in the 21st century there is still a major transformation of role of state and market forces has entered the domain which was earlier the exclusive jurisdiction of state bring out bringing out the change in role of state from doerer to the become a facilitator regulator but public administration is still at the basic of the government basis of the government it is the instrument through which expression of the state had to apply in the modern contemporary so they are still having three important role one is pro protecting and regulatory activity like police and health and national defense second is promotional and assisting activities for farmers factory workers women and children entrepreneurial activities uh, kind of uh, post offices irrigations and all kind of things so uh, uh, with this i am going to conclude uh, with this lecture so thank you namaste